Wanted to get into some numbers you found, Danny, from Mike Clay, who provides projections for just about every single individual offensive player in the league and for teams. And needless to say, he's not very high on the commanders, but we wanted to see where maybe he's too low on the locals. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a Mike Clay fan. So when you're in this business, you're going to get stuff wrong. Somebody, you know, exceeds something or doesn't come close to it, and you're, it's ripe for ridicule. But he's using every bit of data for, you know, trying to account for everything from development to strength of schedule to, you know, uh, every predictive measure you can come up with to try to give you an analysis of how strong or weak a given team or player or, or kind of his expectations are. And it is not very kind for Washington. I'll just go through a, a couple of these things. Jane Daniels, this is his, his uh, commander's uh, projections. Okay. Daniels, uh, 300, 3450 in terms of yardage, 15 touchdowns, 14 picks, sacked 41 times, and ends up with 587 rush yards and five touchdowns. Ooh. Yeah. Tough. I mean, that would be a really bad year, I'd say. Disappointing season. Brian Robinson, 200 carries, which is what he's been at over the last couple of seasons, give or take. Obviously, a lot of reasons for that. Uh, 841 yards, five touchdowns. Austin Eckler, 480 on the ground and 434 through the air, so not even achieving 1,000 total yards out of the backfield. That I think that would be disappointing for some. I don't know where you are on, on your prognostications for him. but Does that, he have catch totals there? He does. Uh, Robinson, 35. Eckler, 49. That's the low end of what I would hope that, I think Eckler could catch 60, maybe even a, a J.D. McKissick, Larry Center's like 70 balls. That's what I think, because yeah. I think there's not much else. So I think he's going to catch the football. I think they're going to they're gonna get that going a lot. Uh, McLaurin, as you'd expect, 74 catches, just over 1,000 yards. 1,012 is what he's got with only three touchdowns. So McLaurin traditionally doesn't score a lot of touchdowns for whatever reason. He's been in that mid-70s, just over 1,000-yard thing with – with a offensive course, stroke course. with with, yeah. ba with bad offenses, bad quarterbacks, whatever. So that kind of falls in line. And I kind of went and looked at some other data points, just for example, of other teams. And it's it's similar for um you know some of the groups that we we would expect to struggle, right? Like the Giants have similar uh type numbers offensively. Um, look at uh, you know, somebody that's probably better at Pittsburgh, similar numbers for uh George Pickens, for example. Are you talking about Clay's projections? Yes. Okay, right. Going going through all those and you could go up and down, and I won't bore everybody with the rest of the numbers, but the second leading receiver, he's got Luke McCaffrey, 41 catches for 482 yards. Uh, Delmi Brown, only 27 catches. Zacchaeus, only 27 catches. Not much between them. So you, can, you, you would combine two or three guys and get a number two receiver. Yeah, So, and I think that's very plausible, honestly. We've talked about this. Mm -hmm. I, I don't necessarily think they've got a receiver on their roster not named McLaurin who's going to catch 50 balls or go, for 600 plus yards or something like that. I would be stunned if Zacchaeus did it. He caught 10 passes last year. Yep. I'd be really surprised if Brown did it, who caught 15, 12 or something, and 12 yeah. passes the last three years, 12 last year. It, it, that's just not happening. I, I don't think a 60 for 650 guy or something is walking through that door, but it also doesn't have to be that way. If Ertz is healthy, I think he's going to be number two in catches and yards. And I think he's actually going to have a big year. Like, that's a guy I'd buy stock in fantasy-wise, to be honest, if you're in this area. The, the problem with that is he just never stays healthy. But if you were to tell me he played 15 games, I think people will be shocked around the country how frequently they utilize him. Because Kingsbury knows him, brought him over from Arizona, mm -hmm. big part of the offense there at one point. You saw him catch 15 balls in a game here years ago at the peak of his powers. Like, that's a guy that's just going to be a volume shooter, so to speak. But when he gets hurt, it's... That's re really, and if he gets hurt, hopefully he doesn't. But when that happens and he's not available, now what? That's where I worry. That's a lot of Eckler, some Robinson. Now it's the Zacchaeus, the Ami Brown show. Maybe that's where Luke McCaffrey in the slot comes into play, providing some size without Ertz. That's when I start to get a little concerned. So by way of reference, again, just this is I'm just passing on the information, everybody. He's got them last in the league in offensive uh, touchdowns, so last in the league in scoring, presumably. Uh, 27th in yards. 27th in completions, um, uh, high in right terms of rushing attempts. Uh, I think he sort of sees what maybe some of us here do, where this is how they're going to they're going to major in things, and try not to put too much on Daniels' plate early on. Uh, defensively, they'll improve some, but still be in the in the upper 20s in terms of ranking. Beyond that, his win probability stat. Now that's going to change week to week, right? This is before the season starts. This is assuming everybody's health. Yeah, you play when you start to put more info into the algorithm. 
it's going to change massively. You play Philadelphia without Jalen Hurts and, and A.J. Brown because they both, uh, you know, slipped on an oil slick. Okay, well, it's a different uh, outcome potentially, right? But looking at the win probability as of now, they have an above 50% win probability for one game currently on their schedule. Whereas you look at San Francisco, who has 17. You look at uh, uh, you know teams that are probably competing for Super Bowls, the lowest they'll have is like one game that's more of a toss-up, right? The Jets, for example, I think have one, and that's a week one game um, against somebody really good that they play at the outset. I can't remember who they play. Maybe but Week one, yeah, the Jets have with the Chiefs. Yeah, Jets-Chiefs. That's the only game they're not win probability favored, yeah. so to speak, right? So basically the two games with the Giants, one's a toss-up and one at home, the second game of the year, they are at a higher than a coin toss in terms of win probability. It doesn't mean that you go 2-15 and 15 or whatever. I don't think anybody's saying that. You win games you're not supposed to win all the time. It's the league. It's why you line up and play. But needless to say, not bullish expectations on the old Washington football. 53. So go back to Daniels for me. Mm-hmm. So he had him in the mid-3,000, right? Yep. 3,400 change. Is that where he had him? Yes, 3,450 yards. I don't think that would be overly problematic if he's running for another five to 700. Because then you're talking about 4,000 yards from the quarterback position as a rookie, which is, I think, how we're going to have to view numbers with Daniels. Just to look at passing yards when he does so much with his feet is not fair to the player. Mm -hmm. Same as, say, Lamar or Josh Allen or any of these other guys. It's total touchdowns, total yards. How many rushing touchdowns did he have him for? Five. 587 yards on the ground and five touchdowns. So he had 20 total touchdowns and 14 picks. Mm Mm-hmm. That is the very low end of what I would find to be acceptable, so to speak, in the sense of, I got to be honest, that I'd be disappointed coming out of his rookie year if, if those are the numbers. Now, as long as he looked the part, the process is going to be way more important than the result. As long as he's showing that he can do this, he's in control of the offense, in command of the huddle, making good decisions, and not every pick is created equal. He's got 14 picks. Maybe four of them were bounced off someone's hands. You know, if he's still just not seeing the zoning linebacker in week 13, that's a whole different story. But I think this fan base is in a place where they would be able to deal with that better than maybe in the past, where they could say, yeah, it wasn't great. He had 14 picks. He lost four or five fumbles, whatever it is. It's about 20 touchdowns and, you know, 20 turnovers. But look at the good stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget the offseason where everyone was raving about him. Let's not forget this staff thinks he's the real deal. Let's build this thing up bigger and better in year two. Let's get him more help on the line because you're saying he's projecting 40-plus sacks, which is way too many. Um, let's let him help the line. He's going to learn. He's going to get the ball out faster. And let's add another weapon or two. And I think that'll be the narrative within the fan base, the discourse more than, uh-oh. Because that, that would be a slightly disappointing season. Wouldn't be a disaster, but it just wouldn't be great. So let me offer a couple caveats. Over the last couple of years, we've actually seen a, a precipitous drop-off in terms of touchdown passes, league-wide. This is not you know some fluky thing. This has been really ongoing since, I would say, 2022. The last year, we had some really huge, prolific uh, passing touchdown totals. A number of guys over 30. Pat Mahomes led the league that year with 41. Last year, I only think a couple guys were north of 30. Now, we're not that far removed from the passing era where, you know, uh, you had to have 50-something if you wanted to lead the league, and you still might not have. Last year, I think it was... Um, four quarterbacks. Yeah, Prescott, Prescott, yeah. Love, Purdy, right. and Goff, 36, 32, 31, and 30. So, all of a sudden... Another two guys at 29, another one at 28. But yeah, yeah 30 or more, four quarterbacks. And, and people kind of look at those numbers and go, wow, that'd be really disappointing. And 15 touchdowns and 14 picks would be. But Jalen Hurts, for example, a, a guy that's you know not too far removed from being an MVP candidate, is only projected by Clay to have 20 touchdown passes uh, with 11 picks. Now, you add in his tush-push rushing total touchdowns, it's really going to buoy his overall production. But this is a different time. I think Pat Mahomes was the highest touchdown prognostication I saw at 33. So, it's not as if... The, the the elites, the best of the best, are going to do 40-something, 50-something. Aaron Rodgers coming off MVP seasons where he's doing 45, 50, et cetera. Everybody's a bit watered down in these kind of expectations. Just something to throw out there. Mahomes, two seasons ago, had 41 touchdowns. And that year, both Burrow and Allen had 35. Geno Smith was the other guy with 30. Cousins, Goff, both had 29. So you were right there at like seven guys having basically 30 touchdowns. 
So I would say last year was a little bit of an outlier, honestly, in the touchdown discussion. Because if you go back to 2021, which is only three football seasons ago, Brady had 43, Stafford had 41, Herbert had almost 40, Mahomes had 37, Dak had 37, Rodgers had 37, Allen had 36, Burrow had 34, Cousins had 33. We we're talking about ten guys with yeah. thirty three or more. But it's so it looks th- there's a trend line here. There's a, a right two. I don't know if there's a yes. There is over two years. It's gone down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Does that mean that that's what it is now? But maybe we're we're getting off track to even a point that's irrelevant with Daniels because I think you just said something that that is more relevant, which is I don't think just viewing his passing stats because he's a quarterback is the correct way to do this. Like I, I want to go back to that. We have argued some over how much he should run. My answer is as much as he can, as much as he wants to. I think that is the superpower. That's what's going to make him really special. Like Lamar Jackson won the MVP award last year. He threw for 3,600 yards and 24 touchdowns. Lamar Jackson, one time in his career, has thrown for more than 26 touchdowns. In fact, he's had years, two of the last three years, where it's 16 and 17 through 12 games. He was on pace for like 20 touchdowns, 21 touchdowns in those years. His other MVP season was ridiculous. He threw for 36 touchdowns that year, but he has never thrown for 4,000 yards. And he actually actually hasn't even been close. He won the MVP in 2019 while throwing for 3,100 yards. Over 15 games, that's next to nothing. But he was unbelievably efficient, led the league in QBR, led the league in touchdowns. The highest percentage of his passes were scores among all quarterbacks. The difference was that year he recreated the position with how he ran the ball while being an efficient passer. Not prolific statistically, but just super efficient. So he went out and he ran for 1,200 yards. And my point is, if Jaden Daniels runs for 3,100 with 25 touchdowns, we shouldn't be comparing that to Kirk Cousins or Jared Goff or some guys that are just standing in the pocket. If he also runs for nine seventy five and six, yeah. If you're looking, you're looking at the total offense at the position, which was always my point back in the day. By the way, with regards to Michael Vick, bef- b- the Atlanta Falcons you're going version, way back in the well, day. Well, everybody would would go nuts about Vick, and the highlights were high, the highlights were otherworldly. They were incredible. He never accumulated four thousand yards total. So even with the passing, even with the running, now he did once he got to Philadelphia, he did that much later. But everyone was crowning him, telling he was the best. And I go, well, I actually would take this pedestrian, boring guy that's going for 4,000 yards because Vic's not even creating that. He's not even getting to that total when you combine both. So I'm all for combining both, and we're looking at total offense gained. But to me, the evolution of him as a passer is the assignment. Because if you if you if he falls into a coma and wakes up in a year, he'll still be able to run the ball, right? I, that's what needs to be paramount and worked on. Right is be able to be able to uh, throw the football. Yeah. So now, obviously, he's got a great arm. He's got the skill set to be able to do this stuff. But to me, that development is the most essential thing that a quarterback needs to not just be a gimmick, but to actually thrive and be awesome and and be you know sustainable in this league. Which I don't think anybody would dispute, especially people that lived through 2012 and, and saw the transition Griffin was making. Where we'll continue to disagree is I don't think you have to not be running to develop as a passer. That's what Griffin used to butt heads with the Shanahan's about all the time. And I still disagree with it. Like the idea that you cannot develop as a passer and have your cake and eat it too. Th- there's 24 hours in a day. You know, the, the, you're, if you run eight, nine, 10 times in a game or something, uh, that there's so much time and energy that can be um, sunk into the development of the player in the pocket as a QB. I, I think you've seen it with a guy, whether it's Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen's a great example who they immediately said, let's make you the best weapon you can be right away. And what has he done year in and year out? He's gotten a little better and a little better and a little better as a passer. Saw it with Jalen Hurts. Now he regressed last year. But um, anyway, to me, yes, I will agree with that point totally. How good he is throwing the football is what is eventually going to determine whether or not he's a superstar. Yeah, so to me, this, this would be gravely disappointing. And the, the the interception numbers, which would be more than he's kind of shown a proclivity to. This isn't like a Rex Grossman gunslinger coming out of school uh, kind of guy that's turned the ball over a bunch. Keeping it out of harm's way was, to me, what made the, the, a lot of things made Griffin special in 2012. But that was probably the biggest one was you're getting some of these highlights, whether they're running the ball or, uh, you know, some of the great throws that he made, whether they're deep ones or the slot fade against the Giants to Santana Moss or, you know, some of the dimes that he threw. 
without turning it over, without doing the rookie mistake thing, without doing what Peyton Manning did or Troy Aikman did or, or, or a lot of these guys. And to, to me, Daniel's taking care of the football sort of seem would seem to be more the identity of what they're looking for as they eventually pile more and more responsibility on his plate. The 14 picks to that point would be the most disappointing part. Yep. Now, I can live with 14 picks if they... If it's open, prolific. Yeah, if they're yeah. opening their offense up and they're just slinging it. He's attempting more passes than I expect, like 500-some pass mm-hmm. attempts, Sam House style, and he's got 25 touchdowns to go with it or whatever. But to your... Yeah, I think you're 100% right. The way they're going to do this thing, hey, man, let's manage this. Let's run the football with Austin Eckler, Brian Robinson, and yourself. Let's make some explosive plays, legs and our arm, but let's not turn the rock over. And so I'm thinking more like 20 to 22 touchdowns like you are, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. But I, I think with that, you want 10 or fewer picks probably, right? You want eight, yeah. nine interceptions or something fewer. And I'm, I'm giving you that number because you're a kid. You're going to make some bad mistakes. And stuff happens. Like exactly. tip passes, good luck, bad luck. Well, a ball bounces out of one of your not so good receiver's hands. I guess for me, I'm not even talking about actual picks as much as like, what should be picked, mm-hmm. the turnover-worthy play model from PFF. Mm-hmm. Like, you want 10 or fewer if if he's throwing the limited amount that I'm expecting in this offense. Because I do think we're going to see them try to make it as simple as they can, not schematically, but in terms of what's on his plate early. What have they said all offseason? You don't have to be the hero. That You're just part of the process. You're just one of the guys. You're a piece of the puzzle. I think we could keep see them uh, seeing them trying to and to send that message with how they call plays if Cliff Kingsbury is on board with that early this season. 